Hi, uh, welcome to this webinar today. Uh, what we're going to talk about is uh, one of the features that we have right now, that is uh, OPC UA. And we're go going to talk about uh, how you can use with the OPC UA and how you can integrate this technology into your architecture. So, and what I'm going to talk about is that um, if you have ever heard of Industry 4.0 or uh, Industrial Internet of Things, you will understand that what they are going to do is to um, minimize the effort for machines to talk to each other because there are just too many brands and devices out there and everyone trying to communicate with each other, then there must be a single and unified protocol for everyone to talk with. Just like English may be the, uh, the most used language internationally right now today. And in machines, uh, that, is, that will be OPC UA, and this is our focus today. What we're going to cover in this webinar first will be uh, what is it, what is OPC UA, and the second part is a short demo about OPC UA, and the final part is we're going to talk about uh, how we embed OPC UA features and what are other features in DMT G01. Okay, so imagine you are uh, manager of the factory and you have so many factory uh, manufacturing lines that uh, speak in different languages. So for example in Japanese and one in uh, German and one in Chinese. And you can take this as like different brands of controllers. So for example from Mitsubishi and in Europe a uh, robot line, you have Siemens, and for uh, packaging, you have Rockwell. So every machine in this factory talks in different languages. So what you need to do, you need to collect the data from them and to give a summary to our report to your manager or to the, the enterprise. But the problem is that you don't know every language because you know in, it's different it's hard for people to find someone that I can that can talk in over three or four different languages for example if you want a SCADA system to talk in different languages it will be very uh, costly and you will take you will take some money to do it and it's going to be hard for people to integrate them because you have to translate one by one for each machine so the situation here is that uh, OPC will be a uh, want to solve this problem. So uh, it was invented in 1996, and OPC technology was built on a Windows platform because you can imagine at the time OPC is invented, it will, there is very limited uh, choices. Because uh, you can imagine at that time, maybe Windows 97 or 98 are the only available uh, user interface system. And you don't have many choices. And so that's the only thing they can use. So they use Windows. And how you can use it is that um, you have one OPC client talk in OPC protocol to an OPC server. And the OPC server will help you to translate different uh, machine languages into OPC language. So the OPC server is the one that translates every machine protocol into OPC protocol. And the client or the graphic interface that you are using is the OPC client. And the problem for OPC, classic OPCs that it can only run on Windows platform. And you can imagine that right now you have so many different devices in different platforms. So you have 
Android devices, you have uh, iOS or you have Windows Phone or you have Mac, you have different platforms that want to monitor to connect to the same system. So this is why uh, OPC UA was invented. So you can see the name uh, Unify Architecture. So what they are going to do is to help everyone that want to talk to the machine and use uh, on their own platform. So you can run it on Android and you can run it on iOS and also you can run by uh, different programming languages, for example, C and Java and .NET and different languages because you can imagine on, uh, on Linux and um, Android, you don't have access to .NET system. Well, maybe one year ago you don't have access to it. So that's uh, the problem that OPC wants to solve. And the second problem is OPC UA have, has improved their uh, security system. So if you have ever used classic OPC, the problem they have is they don't have built-in security. They only use COM and DCOM, which is um, encrypted data. So if you want to uh, transfer your data from your factory to your cloud service or to your uh, remote site, then you need to take care about how you can transfer uh, secretly your data into uh, the internet. So OPC rate solved this by using a uh, SSL and TOS encryption method and they have for example, on our platform, we support anonymous lock-in and we support using username and password, or we also support X.509 certificate. That is, uh, you can use a, a very long certificate to lock into a system, which is very safe compared to other two different authentication methods. And also you can control the access uh, for different users. So for anonymous, maybe the anonymous, anonymous user can only read from your OPC US server. But if a locked in use, locked in user that is, that has a, an administrator or that is a, uh, a have, that has right control of the machine, then you can write or send different control command to the OPC US server. So that is the power of the OPC US security. And the third part is uh, OPC UA has a very user friendly uh, tech access. So if you connect to one of the OPC UA servers, then you will be able to browse and see what's inside the OPC UA server. So you can see on the screen, uh, if you want to know the pressure, the state or the temperature of the compressor, you will know this is the pressure. You will know this is the state. You don't have to uh, read over the, the manual to see maybe the pressure is on the MW1000 uh, location and find state on maybe uh, M and uh, 100 different address. So it's easier for uh, integrators to use OPC UA to get the information they want. And it's very user friendly. So you can scroll the tree to see every detail that you have on the system. And one more thing is that OPC UA supports uh, subscribe and notification mechanism. So this mechanism, uh, first, the client will send a subscribe message to OPC UA server saying that the client wants to subscribe to uh, events on the PLC device or to the thermostat or to some different vaults. Then if something happens, then the OPC UA server will actively send a notification to the OPC UA client. So it will save network traffic. You don't have to spend a lot of network bandwidth to 
polling from the OPC server because you can just use subscribe and something happens, it will notify you without uh, asking every now and then. And OPC UA is not just about the factory itself. Uh, so maybe you have heard of that uh, the, the ERP major player, uh, SAP, they have already supported uh, OPC UA in their system and MES systems. And so, of course, every SCADA system and POC HMI has support for uh, OPC already. But you can imagine in this, uh, in this tri in this industry, so everyone, if everyone can talk in OPC UA language, then everyone can talk to each other. So if one of your uh, enterprise, uh, your IT technician wants to know uh, if the uh, IP address or something that is correctly set up on your HMI or on your SCADA, you can just use OPC UA to connect to it and to get or configure the right information on it, or maybe different, you can configure a different work order or different uh, record on different level of systems. And also OPC UA, they have a very big picture is that you can also publish or send data using OPC UA to the cloud because OPC UA has a very well designed security as I just mentioned and they have very good authentication authorization and design so is capable of sending data to the cloud so they have uh, this in this uh, system too okay and then I'm going to give you a short demo about OPC UA gateway and you can see on the screen is easier for users to understand that the this is a timer and this is the uh, the original way to access the data. So this one is much easier for people to understand that what is this and what information should I expect inside this register. And what I have right here is I'm going to use uh, one PC client to connect to the OPC server and then retrieve information from the POC driver. And also I can use an Android phone to access data on the OPC server here. Okay, so what I'm going to use is a software called UXpert on Windows. It's a free and easy to use OPC uh, Software. And what I have here is I, I can see uh, I have one Siemens S7 uh, 300 PLC and one CMT G01 uh, OPC UA gateway on the right. So they are connected through the MPI connection. Okay, so this is the one I'm going to use in this demo. Okay, let me open up the uh, UA expert. So on the top left in the servers, I click right click on it and click add to add a, an OPC server and click on the server that I have on file and okay. To, and I would like to use non-security. So you see that there are different uh, encryption options on the list, okay. And when I click OK, and I right now I can click right click on it and click connect. Then you can see on the left hand side the address space. You have all the tech information, just like in file explorers. So there are all in folders, and I can expand to see different information information on the. HM2 on the uh, CMT G01. So if I want to read this, this, and this, and this, I can just select them and drag them to the center to start uh, monitoring those data so we can see the values 
are changing right now. Okay, so this is a uh, very simple to use OPC client on Windows, and it is free. You can just go online and search for this uh, software. And then I'm going to show you using an uh, Android phone, and what I'm using is a uh, Metricon Visor, which is a free uh, OPC client on Android. Start. Okay, so let me just click connect to connect to an OPC server and click on CMT G01 here. Okay, click connect to connect to it. All right, and this is the monitor screen and let me go back to the browse. So I can see there are some things here. So I click on the object, which is the one that I that we have just like um, the uh, windows on the back of the, uh, this team, team viewer session. Okay, let me click on the Steam and the 7300 MPI and text on it. Then right here I can choose to subscribe to different tags on the OPC server. Okay, when I'm done, I click on the monitor. Okay, you can see all of them are here. So when I click on one of them, so you can see that uh, the data for the timer is changing and the bit information for N0 is changing too. Okay, so this is the demo for uh, OPC UA on Windows and also on Android system. Okay. All right, this, so let's go back to the fly and this is uh, Windows and this one is uh, Android. Okay, so um, if you have watched our uh, another video which talks about uh, MQTT. So right now you understand OPC rate, but you may be confused about which one to use when you want to uh, retrieve data or trying to monitor different systems. So if you want to use OPC, uh, if you have only uh, one uh, few connections, I would suggest you to use OPC UA. But if you have a uh, relatively complicated system, so if you have many clients and many servers, then I would recommend you to use MQTT because it is a topic based and flexible communication. So you don't have to manage every connection by yourself. You can just use topic and then subscribe to different things that you are interested in. And if you have a firewall on your system, then maybe MQTT might be the better answer for you because uh, it's hard for uh, machine builders to ask every end user to, well, to open the door, open the hole on their firewall. But MQTT, you can just set up an uh, internet through MQTT server. Then every your every machine can publish data onto the MQTT server. Okay, so I would like to say uh, if you have only one server and you have many clients, and then I will recommend you to use OPC UA because it's simpler for you to understand the, the, the configuration if and if the server goes down then every client can know what is going on and do something immediately but if you use NQTT it can be done but you can only well if you publish from the server to the client then uh, it's easy but if you want to send a control command back to this guy on the left, it will be uh, relatively harder because you have to set up two different topics 
the one for this guy to publish and another for this guy to subscribe. Okay, so it's a little bit complicated. But if you have many clients and many servers, then I would recommend you to use MQTT here because you can uh, set up just every client and server or every people in the system to publish or subscribe to the MQTT server. And it's easier to set up. And you can just use topic to filter the data that you want. And so if you want to use OPC in the system, you can imagine that if you add one client in the system, then you need to configure every server one by one. And if you are in the factory, then you may need to modify and restart the server somehow. So it is uh, relatively harder in this uh, if you have uh, multiple clients and multiple servers. So if you can imagine that if you add one more server and some of the client need to connect to the server and you will be uh, a little bit complicated than if you use uh, MQTT. Okay, so this is about how you can choose from one to another one. Okay, so let me just review it about uh, MQTT. So MQTT is very suitable for uh, one-way uh, one connection or for only telemetry or notification. But if you want to do inquiries or commands, then you have to set up top multiple topics to do maybe publish and subscribe from another people. Okay. All right. So um, we have a uh, set up our uh, software to support OPC UA and MQTT and to help you to integrate to your customers data MES ERP or any IoT application easily. So we help you to uh, convert every protocol that we already uh, we have already supported which is over uh, 300 different protocols. So if you have different type of PLC, then uh, we should have support for it. So it should be relatively easy for you to use our device rather than write your own protocol converter. So we have a CMT G01 which supports OPC UA server and we and also client and Mapbus, TCP, R, RTU client and server and MQTT client and also server. Okay, so this is a very uh, useful device if you want to integrate into Industry 4.0 or IOP system and also it does more than this. So uh, it supports using data transfer, which uh, will help you to maybe transfer from one of your device from the net, uh, from the Ethernet and to a serial device, or from a, a Siemens to a Mitsubishi PLC. And we support email and macros for you to uh, do some calculation and to automate your uh, your conversion or maybe some alarms if you want and a scheduler and event logs okay. and also we have a easy access 2.0 supported on cmdg01 so you get alarm notification on your mobile phone or mobile tablet if something happens to your machine and also we support a poc pass-through um, CMT G01, uh, which is a feature that you can uh, program a remote PLC uh, uh, inside of your office. So it's a very useful uh, technology to use because you don't have to go outside and to debug and find the correct 
cable to connect to your machine. All you have to do is connect CMT001 to the internet and then log into the EZFSYS 2.0, then you can start program or monitor your uh, control devices. Okay, so CMT001 is a screen glass gateway. Three, it has uh, three serial ports supported and two Ethernet. So one for your office and one for your field devices. Then okay. you will use uh, Easy Builder Pro to program uh, this device, this gateway. Okay. And the features that we have, uh, I have just mentioned it. So you have email, notification, easy access, data transfer, and macro. And also uh, some customers that I have met, they have a very a strong image that if your system wants to uh, support OPC, then you need to have one industrial PC with Windows installed, and then you need to buy an OPC server from some OPC server vendor and install the server on it, then you will have to different cost for this. So you need to buy an industrial PC and then you need to buy OPC server from the market. And the problem is that most uh, OPC server vendors, they charge by protocol. So if you have one protocol, which might be fine, but if you have many protocols or many brands in your system, so maybe you have one a Mitsubishi, you have one Siemens, you have one uh, Ellen Bradley, then you need to buy three different protocols and which can cost a lot. And if you use CMT G01, then you don't need anything on the lab. You can just buy one device and convert everything for you because we can support many protocols on our machines at the same time and also convert all of them into OPC UA and MQTT or even MathBot. Okay. All right, so you can use uh, Easy Build Pro and in the future we are going to support uh, web configuration so you can modify the OPC UA nodes or the tree structure using web browser without using Easy Builder Pro because some customers, they are not allowed to install any software on their uh, computer. So supporting a web configuration is a very nice feature for the CMTG01. Okay. All right, so I'm going to show you how you can set up a uh, CMTG01 by using Easy Builder Pro. So what you need to do is add a POC device and configure the OPC server. Then you can download to the OP, uh, CMT G01 that you're all set. Okay, so let me go back to the Easy Builder Pro. So I could click on the new project and select CMT G01 on the list. Click OK. Then window will pop up to ask you to add a PLC device into uh, the device list of CMT001. So I can add a MOSFOT or I can add a Siemens here. So I can search for 300 and get the Siemens 300 MPI here. Okay, click OK and click OK. Okay, all right. Then you're all set. You can just click on the LPC UA you can see that Siemens, the Siemens PLC you have added, and click on the text. Move back to add some different address. Okay, for 1000 for a timer. Okay, make it writable. And add an input zero, and which is the button. Uh, special button. Okay. Then, exit. 
done with the LPC server setting and click download. Click save. Then you can download this project to SMT G01. And then we're all set. You can, after you download it to um, the machine, then you can start using OPC to connect to it, just like I have uh, using the Windows base or the Android base uh, client to test it. Okay, so this is SMT G01. And what we help you is that you can integrate OPC UA and M2CT very easily into your system without purchasing uh, additional accessory or industri industrial PC. And uh, all our PLC drivers are synchronized with our standard uh, HMI, so you don't have to worry about this, uh, the driver support. So we support all our drivers on CMT G01. So this device is a very unique and versatile product for you to integrate to IOT or to any smart factory that you want to build. Okay, so this is uh, everything we I have co want to uh, cover today. So CMT G01, OPC UA, and demo of it. Okay. So. If you have any question or any uh, prob problem setting up CMT G01, then you can uh, go to our website and go to the service request to ask questions or to send us email uh, using uh, service mail at wintech.com. Okay, or just you can ask any our distributor local um, in your country. Okay. And if you have any questions, you can uh, or you can ask right now on the right of the panel, and then uh, the seminar ends right now. So hope you have a great day and the rest of your week.